In this presentation, we will discuss section 1231, 1245, and 1250 gains and losses. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Section 1231, Business Assets. Assets used in a trade or business that are held for more than one year are Section 1231 Business Assets. Gains and losses from sales are netted before we apply the taxes. So if we have gains and losses, we're going to net those together and then apply taxes. Net gains are then taxed as long-term capital gains subject to recapture provisions. So if we think about the sales, we have gains and losses. We're saying we have a net gain of sales for Section 1231 business assets. Then they're going to be taxed as long-term capital gains if we have gains, which is usually preferential tax treatment. So in other words, we are not using the progressive tax tables, but rather a different tax system that is going to be based on long-term capital gains rates, usually beneficial rates. So this is typically a good thing. However, we do have the recapture provision. So what is a recapture provision? Recapture provisions are because of depreciation deductions taken in prior years and will change some or all of the gain into ordinary gain. Why would this be the case? What's really happening here? Let's think of a situation where we're selling section 1231 property and we're saying, okay, the sales price is 10,000. The adjusted basis we're going to say is the cost of 15,000. And then we have accumulated depreciation, which is really the result of us uh, taking a deduction, the depreciation expense in prior years of 7,000. And therefore the adjusted basis is going to be 8,000. The gain then is going to be the sales price minus the adjusted basis, or we have the 2,000. Now, if we think about this gain, how did this gain happen? The gain isn't a result of us comparing the sales price and the cost. It's not like we got more money than the cost. It's because of the accumulated depreciation that we had. And when we had the accumulated depreciation, the accumulated depreciation resulted in us taking a deduction. And we took the deduction in the form of depreciation expense. And that deduction was taxed at ordinary income rates. So we've got a deduction in prior years related to ordinary income now when we make the sale the irs is going to say hmm well i'm not sure it's fair that we have the gain that's really just a result of over depreciating being taxed at a lower rate so we really have kind of a conflict between two irs type of rules here one is the depreciation that we have often is going to be accelerated so it's not really designed to be uh, to result in the in the adjusted basis being really what the adjusted basis would be or close to fair market value. Oftentimes, it's designed for us to stimulate the economy, and therefore the depreciation may be much higher than the actual kind of decline or deterioration in the value. And what's the result of that? The result of that is that if we sell <laughs> the the asset, then it's very likely that we're going to have a gain because we over depreciated it in the past. So the result of those two laws that kind of don't make sense, they're not on a, they're not on a, a basis for accounting basis, they're kind of on a, a ta other reasons basis in order to stimulate the economy, results in this problem that happens fairly often. And that's the case that we're going to have uh, a gain on the sale. And the gain under Section 1231 property would be taxed at preferential rates. And so we have to think then, all right, is there a situation where we got a benefit in the past on ordinary income rates which are going to be higher rates we got if we got a benefit from a deduction in the past on the ordinary ordinary income rates then we have to recapture that and basically in some way and that's going to be kind of the general rule or the general idea when we're considering that this concept of recapture now you can think of a situation where we sold it possibly for 16,000 where it went up in value if that's the case, well, then we had a gain of 1000 that's not recaptured because it would be over the cost there. And that 1000 then would be taxed at the preferential, uh, the preferential rates. But most of the time when we're talking about equipment, stuff like if we're not, if we're, th if we were thinking about real estate or something like that, it might go up in value. And there might be some equipment that goes up in value, but most of the time equipment is going to go down in value. We're not going to typically sell things like equipment that are going to be higher than what we purchased it for so the gain that we result oftentimes is going to be a result of the fact that we 
depreciated too much. We over depreciated, which isn't our fault. That's what the tax code allows us to do. But that allows us with this situation where we have this gain and we have this situation where the tax code now says that we might need to recapture some of it due to the differing rates between ordinary income, the rate we got the deduction at, and the capital gains rates, which may be beneficial and therefore result in the need for some kind of recapture. Section 1231 business assets. We have section 1231 losses are treated as ordinary losses, not subject to deductibility limitation of 3000 per year. So other than the recapture, the 1231 is a great area to be because if we do have the gains other than the recapture, we get the preferential treatment of the lower rates. And if we have the losses, when we're talking about individuals for the losses, they're capped at the 3000 of losses per year they can carry forward. The section 1231 business assets don't have that, that limit of the amount of losses we can write off. So we get, to, we get to take the losses, in other words, we get to take them at ordinary income rates. When we're, when, and when we're talking about losses, we want to take them at the, at the ordinary income rates. And so that's beneficial to us. So when you think of 1231, you, you typically think, yes, it's, it's the best of both worlds with the problem of the possible recapture problem, meaning gains are taxed at the lower rate with the exception of the recapture issue. Losses are going to be taxed at, uh, at the ordinary income, higher rates, which is good for losses, and we're not subject to the 3000 limitation for capital losses for 1231 property. Then we have section 1245 and section 1245 we want to remember this can get a little bit confusing when we start thinking about these subsections but just remember that section 1245 property is a subsection of section 1231 and applies to personal trade or business property so remember tw section 1245 property subset of section 1231 property any gain is recaptured and taxed at ordinary income to the extent of depreciation taken. So we have that same kind of issue with the recapture that we talked about in the previous slide. Any remaining gain is taxed at the preferential rates. So remember, when we think of the preferential rates, we're typically thinking that uh, the, the ordinary income is usually non-preferential and the rates that we could have for capital gains rates are typically going to be lower. So if we get a different capital gains rates, oftentimes if we're talking about 1231, and subsection 1245, the, the rate that would be different than the ordinary income would typically be lower. Then we have section 1250 property, once again, a subsection of section 1231, applies to buildings, both residential and non-residential. Section 1250 property is a subset of section 1231 property. Amount of gain attributable to depreciation taken in the past is taxed at 25%, up to the depreciation amount. So we got a similar kind of issue, a little bit of a twist on that up to 25%. Any remaining gain is taxed at the preferential rates. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.